Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is how I painted my watercolor, Nemora. You know, the beach at night is a really special place, a place of mystery and magic. And on a special night with people you care for, plus a full moon, it feels almost eternal. This is the feeling I tried to paint into my watercolor. The moon, the magic, the crashing waves. I hope that you'll enjoy it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I began my painting by putting wax around the edges, which would help to contain any paint, excessive water that I placed on next. The wax keeps the paint and water from running all over the stretching board and from the table. Next, I did all my sketching by simply just using some masking fluid. In some places I applied the fluid and smeared it down a little bit with my finger so it would just be a very subtle effect instead of a hard or sharp one. This is an experiment for me and I didn't know if it was going to work or not. I had this reference photo from a night on the beach where it was actually bright enough to take photographs because of that beautiful full moon. The moonlight sparkling on the water was just astounding. So I'm trying to mark out where the waves are and where they're catching the moonlight. The masking dried and my next step was to work on the sky. It was very dark, and yet there were some lights shining on the far horizon from the city down the road. With everything wet, I began by using some paint where I wanted my brighter colors. As well as applying some very dark colors. The clouds did have some suggestions of color, as well as the distant city lighting up the horizon. And working wet was allowing me to let these colors be soft and blend into each other. Some of the colors I'm using are purple, indigo, and Payne's Gray. I'm also using some magenta, some cadmium yellow, and some rose matter. You can see where the masking is repelling the paint. Once this paint is applied Fairly intensely, I placed plastic wrap over it, and you saw that I arranged them some folds to try to show where I wanted the sky. A heavy book was placed on next, and I marked with a paintbrush where the moon was underneath all that plastic wrap so I could make sure. I worked around that into the water below. Now the fun part. The waves were flowing. The impressions on this wet sand below were flowing and the light was shining down. So I'm trying to paint the water like it actually is flowing from my paintbrush, just like it would in real life. And the water was very dark as well as the sand, except for where I put the masking for those bright shining lights. 
more color added. I wanted it good and dark. Again, I was using purples, Payne's gray, and indigos. And the colors were quite concentrated. There's also some cobalt blue in there. And here comes the magenta. It's Quinn magenta, which is a good, brilliant color. And you can see me continuing to apply more and more washes of this very dark color. When I think I have it dark enough, I am arranging the plastic wrap onto the ocean part. I'm leaving the sand free. And I'm also leaving it to dry all night. I will test the plastic wrap before I remove it. And if it's in the slightest bit wet, I will not take it off till it's dry. You can see the marks that it leaves on the wet paint. I want it to be darker still, so I'm painting carefully around the marks because I want to keep them. I want to suggest movement and clouds in the sky. So I can't overpaint this section because I'll paint all the texture right out. You can see that I'm putting the color down and then trying to leave it alone so I don't paint out my textural marks. Coming into the ocean waves, I am doing the same thing because I want them to be good and dark. I am using my reference photo on my iPad on a very regular basis. And I'm reminding myself where I do not want to make it very dark, but paint the darks around this section by showing the path of the moonlight. It's sort of an in-your-face reminder to myself. Now, this was an exciting painting to me. It really was coming together and helping me to remember that wonderful night when I took those photographs on the beach with my husband and my kids. And they're special people. Again, you see that I'm trying to paint my water flow lines along with the flow of the waves. Time to take off the masking. With the masking off, I go back to the moon and I'm using paint on my brush as well as sections of plain water to control the round shape and then break the edges so it's soft in the sky but stays completely round. Next I go into the clouds and I'm softening the edge where they're very white and where that brilliant moonlight is reflecting. 
Now, as I get further from the moonlight, I'm graying the clouds down. But I am softening the edges with a damp brush because I want them to look soft and natural and not hard. Where I just removed some paint and the paper was damp, I went back and added some darks. And in some sections, I'm removing color to leave it a soft gray. Till the cloud looks just like it should to me. And matches with the reference photo that I have in my memory. I'm removing a little bit of color from the beach now with a damp brush and then blotting it with a paper towel. And I should stress, you shouldn't rub your paper with a paper towel. You should blot it. If you rub the paper and you stress the paper too much, it's going to start to come off. And now I'm going back into all the edges on the water and softening them or graying them down as we move away from the moonlight. I decided to act, add a couple more dots of light with the masking fluid and then paint my color over top of that. And now I'm reestablishing my horizon line. Painting over the areas I just masked. And now section by section, I'll establish the waves. While trying to retain the whites of the moonlight where it reflects directly on the water. It's sort of a balance between taking the color down but keeping some lights and not doing too much. Same thing with the beach foam. On the waves as they crest and that beautiful white foam was sparkling in the moonlight. But I needed to make it a little more subtle. So I was really trying to feel how the water felt in the waves coming in. And so it goes. I take color down, I blend, and I try to retain where I want my pure whites. I'm detailing small details on the foam as well with the point of my brush. I'm taking a little more color off of the beach where the, be where the sand is damp, and I want it to look a little bit more reflective. You actually did see me just doing some wiping of the paper 
And that's because I determined the paper was holding up very well. At this point, I was deciding if I wanted to add the silhouettes of two figures on the beach. Because that is what was showing up in my photograph from my son and his future wife. I asked a couple people for their opinions. Put the figures in or leave it empty. And it came back a resounding, leave it empty. Let it just be the viewer and the beach at nighttime. And anybody with that special memory would be able to feel what it's like. So I did not paint any figures into this painting. And now more subtle shading, more subtle blending, and softening edges. Because I didn't want my edges to be hard in such a gentle light. I'm finishing up some last details and I'm feeling like it's very close to where I want it to be. I have my silhouette marker on the paper still on the lower right side and I try it out one more time to see if it's what I want. And I decide against it. Maybe another painting in the future. Some cloud adjustment. And I have my marker all ready to sign the painting and be done. And there we go. It's done. I hope you enjoyed me painting Namora. I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you ring the bell below, you can get a notification whenever a new video comes out and you won't miss a single one. There's also some links below to click on to see my art page on Facebook, uh, my blog about art and life, and some products I like to use when I create my own art. I have a link to my art products page for purchase, and I always like to see your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.